Welcome back pilot. Today we cover advanced chip operations and in detail the fusion reactor. Always make sure to consult your user's manual. Under fusion you have detailed information of how to put together and operate the fusion reactor. Let's cover the components just in case. We have the reactor core that sits on top of the field coils. We need at least one laser array, one core pump, an MHD generator, the fuel regulator, pellet feeder, capacitor, and the cryo pump. These are the minimum components to make the fusion reactor work, and I will demonstrate why there is a case scenario where we'll need a additional pellet feeder and laser array. Each fusion reactor can handle two pellet feeders and two laser arrays, because each fuel regulator can accommodate two pellet feeders and each capacitor can accommodate two laser arrays. Now, notice too that there's three batteries here. They are in series and they are in between the reactor and the ship. Meaning that if we lost power on the reactor core, then the core actually acts like a switch and disconnects the ship from our batteries, losing all power and going into blackout. In that scenario, an inexperienced and under-equipped personnel will be trapped in the cockpit because the door will remain closed and cannot be pried open. So one option is we add an additional battery and tie in the circuit into the ship. That is perfectly fine. It can be added with a switch and have that battery as a backup or we just add that fourth battery, tie it into the ship and make one additional safety backed up battery with a switch. We will cover that shortly. Now let's look at the reactor itself. And it is currently running. The requirements for the reactor running is the uh, pellet feeder has to be on and the fuel regulator has to be on. If you kill the ignition that stops the reactor and deactivating the field coils will make the reaction go haywire and you will die. You can run the reactor without the cryo, but notice that the temperature will increase. You can also run it without the MHD, the batteries just will not charge. Also notice now here, the three batteries I mentioned earlier are displayed fully charged. We will now shut down the reactor. And we will turn it back to battery. There is a emergency startup feature of the uh, fusion reactor, meaning that we can run it with nearly depleted or a very small battery. And that is possible by not turning on the field coils or cryo pump prior to starting the fusion reactor. However, one thing that we notice right now is the reactor would not allow us to start it because there is still a core pressure and temperature remaining. So we need to purge the reactor core. There's a slow purge function and a fast purge function, turbo purge function. Once we read a vacuum, we, we can return the core purge pumps to off and go through the starting procedure. Oh, if we now hit the fuel regulator, we can start up the reactor and immediately turn on the field coils. Also do note to turn on the cryo pump to maintain the core temperature. The LEDs, except for two, should all turn green. Turn on the MHD and go into charge. There. This is standard operating pattern. Do realize though that the core purge pumps are not displayed on that panel and that you need to physically make sure that they are turned off. Okay, so now do notice, as soon as I turn on these field coils without the reactor running, how quickly our batteries are being drained. So if you leave the coils on, and you mess around and or walk away, you're going to end up with completely dead batteries. In the cockpit, we want to note the reactant remaining, which is 224 hours worth. We have three tanks on board and um, the safety is engaged. Turn on now the uh, thrust cycle 
and we are ready to basically accelerate very very slowly because we are in safety and there is no flow in the um, reactor safe operation is we open the uh, aperture first and then increase the flow then we can use the aperture to control safe levels of operation if the flow is too insufficient then our temperature will increase into unsafe levels let's say we turn it off and it happens slowly in safety mode but it does happen so we'll bleed off that pressure turn off flow first and then the cycle we can exacerbate that with the safety removed a little bit of flow a uh, little bit of aperture then full flow if we cut the aperture see how quickly that increases let's see how much power she's got 5g it's the maximum readout there so if we left the cycle open the reactor will eventually shut down because we lose all pressure and temperature with him this does happen if we were to plot a course as well pause course plot and uh, we engage that course so now the computer will take over and we hope that with the future update of our navigation console the flow control will actually automatically maintain a uh, viable core temperature if we left this going it will actually shut down our fusion reactor as you can see so we'll stop it there okay so that's not that's not good to avoid this we will install one additional feeder and laser okay here we are we've installed one additional battery we basically just tied it in there what we will do also is we will add one more piece of the puzzle uh, let's go here actually okay now if we go to the controls of the uh, fusion reactor we can see our fourth battery is now populated which is excellent and nothing else has changed okay but in the cockpit things have changed as the reactant remaining has now dropped to just below 92 hours and that is because our pellet feeder can of course provide a lot more particle mass what this also means is that we have a lot more thrust so safety is disabled and we will just increase a little bit at a time here and now give her full throttle right wait until we are green so 12 almost 12 11.4 so again safe operation is not how I just did it we would want to cancel flow first and rather risk shut down the reactor than uh, blow ourselves up or, or do expensive damage but now if we do our plot course again and we will have to make an adjustment here because we have a lot more capacity with that pallet feeder let's go to 1.89 we were 1.9 right 95 right pause okay so if we continue now the reactor should remain safe and we're good Okay, so now to building a generator or a fusion reactor. Let's do a 9 by 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 17. There. Then what we want to do is we want to find the center of that and we'll go down one and left and we will place our coil there. Oh, not fill. <laughs> and of course this is where our particulate has to go. 
Then we can place the reactor. We'll just turn it once. Wiring is facing up. We will put our fuel regulator and our pellet feeders. Then we can put a cryo pump here. Generator. And we can put the capacitor in here. We'll put a cryo pump. Oh, sorry. Not, yeah, the um, perch pump. And the laser arrays. And then we're capable of connecting this anywhere to the ship. So we can have the batteries outside or we make the room bigger and have the batteries within the uh, reactor. But um, yeah, the other thing that we will have to be aware of is we need space for coolers and more often than not you require at least two. With this arrangement, which is pretty minimal, but we can go around the entire reactor. I highly recommend that. Then also note that you place this design to where your control is close to a door. So if you had your door somewhere here, then uh, you can go through it and get to the reactor easily. This here then is the minimum setup that we should probably run for the fusion reactor. We need a battery compartment, the fusion reactor itself, and a lot of room for tanks. With the tanks we need a 7x7 seven seven square to place the tank on. Because otherwise, as you can see, it is complaining. Now, we obviously, we don't need the walls, as you can see here. But we do need at least a floor. Like these uh, light frameworks. With those installed, we could have the tanks outside of the ship. But honestly, I do prefer to have them inside of the ship. Just because then we can fix them, maintain them. They don't get damaged by small meteorites. Or when we fly into things but we have set up the coolers the thermostat a backup battery the four batteries that are recognized by the fusion reactor then the deuterium and the cryo and that concludes the course